Good morning. So, we will quickly revise what we learned in the last lecture. Uh, in the last lecture, we looked at uh, dispersion model. Overall, we are just looking at uh, models for non ideal reactors. The first model was Tankison series, the second one is a dispersion model. So, uh, in dispersion model, we assume a tubular reactor geometry, and then of course, we say uh, we characterize this uh, flow pattern by through a parameter called Peclet number. So, we say that fine, we have a tracer that is injected. Okay, at the inlet, which gets which gets into the form like this, so it becomes flat when it comes out. Flat in the sense, of course, uh, it gets distributed. I would say. Now we want to see uh, the behavior, okay, and that this particular behavior is de de that depends on the, the extent of back mixing, which depend, which in turn depends on the Peclet number for the given system. Okay, so we derived equation for this, or rather, we formulated a differential equation for this which was 1 by p e del psi del 2 psi by del lambda square minus del psi by del lambda is equal to del psi by del theta, where theta is dimensionless number, lambda is dimensionless length and p Peclet number is something that characterizes the extent of mixing, okay, which is nothing but u l by d a, where d a is the dispersion coefficient, l is the length and u is the velocity. Okay. And this dispersion coefficient is nothing but um, something similar to a diffusion coefficient, okay. but that the diffusion is by fixed law, where you are talking about migration due to concentration driving force. Here, it, it, it has a slightly broader meaning in the sense, not just diffusion, but it takes care of other effects also and somehow characterizes the extent of mixing uh, that is occurring or the flow that is occurring outside the convective flow. Okay. So, the two types of flow now convective and uh, dispersive. Okay. Now, so this is something that takes care of dispersion and convection is of course, uh, taken care of by the velocity term. Okay. So, this is uh, this is that particular term where you have velocity coming in picture. All right. So, now uh, this Peclet number I, I told you that if it goes to infinity means uh, you have uh, a typical ideal plug flow reactor. If it goes to 0 means you have a CSTR. So, there are two extremes of plug flow uh, oh, sorry Peclet number and uh, in between these two 0 to infinity you will have um, number of Peclet. So, Peclet number giving uh, an idea about the extent of back mixing occurring in the real reactor. Okay. Now, if you have this equation and of course, the corresponding boundary conditions you solve them and you get you get a behavior like this for different values of Peclet number. Uh, this is the exit concentration of course, and for Peclet number equal to 0, you have a CSTR, then for a Peclet number higher than that, you have a behavior like this Peclet number say 5, then you start seeing some lag, then Peclet number say 100 or so, and then you have something like this going up and then at value of Peclet number close to infinity or very large, you see a plug flow behavior. Right. So, this is a quick revision of what we have learned in the last lecture. So, I told you that uh, once so Peclet number is known, I can draw this profile. Other way around, if the profile is known, I can draw, I can get a value of Peclet number. Now, how is the profile known? You do experiments in laboratory. Okay. So, you have a reactor, you do tracer injection and you measure the exit concentration and get this profile. Once you have this profile, from this profile, you have go back and calculate Peclet number. So, you know what this reactor is all about or what kind of mixing is occurring here okay. and then you can predict the conversion, you apply it for the reactive flow that is what we are going to see now. So, before that, now Peclet number is related to deviation okay, or uh, variation, variance. Now, what is that relation? I told you last time sigma square divided by tau m square, tau m is nothing but tau, sorry T m is nothing but tau is the mean residence time 2 by P e minus 2 by P e square 1 minus e raise to minus P e, sorry, sorry. So, this is 1 minus e raise to minus p e. Okay. So, this is a relationship. So, you know okay, this is a residence time, this is p e and sigma. 
So, in, in the case of tangent series, I had a relationship between uh, P e and sorry sigma and n. Now, instead of n, I have P e. So, in tangent series, I have a parameter called n. Here, it is Peclet number. So, once you know the Peclet number, how to get a conversion? So, let us go back to the reactor now. I have a tubular reactor. I write differential balance for it and get a conversion. So, let me write differential balance for the reaction case now. Earlier, it was only non-reactive tracer injection. Now, I have a reaction case. Okay. Uh, before that, sorry. <laughs> uh, before that, this this is something that I obtained for uh, obtained for close close vessel. You know uh, what I mean by close close. That means before the inlet and after the outlet, d a is equal to zero. There is no dispersion happening. And accordingly, we wrote the equations at those boundaries and got a boundary condition. But then it can be open open vessel as well. It can be open close, it can be close open. So, depending on what I assume, I will get different boundary condition. And if your boundary condition is different, then your value of Peclet number is also going to change. Okay. So, the expression that I have got, always remember, the expression that I have got is for a closed closed vessel. Okay. Very important. For open open vessel, uh, you can derive it, derive it, but then of course I am not going to spend some time, spend, spend time on this. It's all given in standard textbooks. Okay, so what I get there is sigma square divided by tau m square or sorry T m square is equal to two by Peclet number plus eight by Peclet number raised to two. All right, so I'll I'll get a relationship for open open uh, vessel like this. What you need to remember is there is a relationship between sigma and p. It changes as as per the boundary condition that I am using. Okay. For an open open system, it must be noted that T m is not equal to tau. So, once you get sigma from E curve, you can calculate the value of p. Okay. If you are not sure about a, uh, what happens in the inlet, what kind of vessel it, uh, it is open, open or close, try and get, a, get all values of possible values of P e depending on which boundary condition you are uh, depending on the boundary conditions and for every peculiar number calculate a conversion. So, you will get some idea at least. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, let us go ahead for the reactive case, reaction happening in a tubular reactor. In fact, our main aim is to design a reactor, but the time that we have spent so far is to just characterize the flow pattern. All right. So, let us go ahead. So, if I take a differential balance at steady state now, it is very important. Okay. Earlier all was unsteady state, now it is a continuous reactor, it is a steady state operation. So, it is a plug, it is similar to what we see in plug flow. Okay. Only thing is now the F A is different. Anyway, so let us write it. D F A by D A Z. Now, it is not del F A, it is D F A because it is steady state, no time, no change with respect to time. All right. Why R A? R A is the rate of reaction, it comes from the rate equation R A is equal to minus K C A or whatever, depending on what kind of reaction it is, first order, second order, it can be anything. Okay. Right. So, I have this differential equation now. In this differential equation, this F A is not u into C A, it is not just u into C A, but it has the diffusion or dispersion term also present there. So, if I if I substitute for F A based on those two terms convective and dispersive okay, or dispersion rather, okay, then what I see is this D A into u, so divided by u D C A by D Z square plus sorry minus d c a by d z okay, plus r a by u is equal to 0. This u will come here anyway. So, that is so these these two terms okay, is nothing but what is it d f a by d z. So, this is 1 by u yeah. 1 by u is equal to this, all right. So, d f a by d z is equal to d a into this into u into d c a by d z. Okay. So, I have just substituted for this and then I have divided by u also on for this term. So, I am dividing it by u, I'm dividing the entire L h s by u. I hope this is clear. Okay. So, you, you just substitute for f a, you know, you know what is f a, right. f a is equal to 
we have already seen this f a is equal to u into c a minus d sorry d a d c a by d z okay, into a c. We have seen this right. Okay. Fine. So, this is like this is the equation now for the reactor because I have the reaction term. I have not expanded this. It, it can be rate equation minus kca or whatever depending on its first order or second order okay now let me write r a is equal to minus kca the first order reaction and go ahead okay. so what do i see da by u is into d2 ca by dz square minus dca by dz minus k c a divided by u is equal to 0. I have just substituted for r a. I non dimensionalize this further on no, I non dimensionalize this further what do I get if I just non dimensionalize it I would get I divide by l. So, 1 by p e d 2 c a sorry d 2 psi by d lambda square minus d psi. See look at this I am going fast, but I think it is ok because we already done similar exercise before. Now, the difference is that you have the reaction term appearing ok. You have the reaction term appearing here. So, for C a it will be psi into into k sorry k psi into k into l divided by u okay why see what i am doing here is i am multiplying or other since i am writing pe here that means i have to multiply it by l here so i am multiplying by l here so l l got cancelled right so i have l appearing here Okay, right is equal to 0. So, this is my dimensionless equation, this is a dimensionless equation, and uh, I go ahead and uh, solve this. Of course, it needs boundary condition, but before that, we will define one more parameter or one more dimensionless number, which is called as, of course, it has many other definitions as well. But here psi into d a is equal to 0. What is this d a? Do not confuse this d a with uh, dispersion coefficient. Okay. So, this, this is a Dymkolar number. Okay. This is a Dymkolar number okay. and you have already uh, seen this number before probably in uh, reaction engineering part 1. Okay. So, this becomes a non dimensionless sorry non dimensional or dimensionless equation. Okay. Dimecular number let, let us define it like what we did for Peclet number. What is Dimecular number? Dimecular number is rate of consumption of A by reaction See in the in the numerator you had k, you remember? Let me write it k l by u. Okay. So, in the numerator you have k. So, this divided by rate of transport of A by convection. So, this is Dymkola number. Okay. So, see A is what is happening to A in the reactor A is moving ahead because of convection and A is reacting. Okay. So, D A tells you the relative importance or relative potential of these two terms okay, or magnitudes of these terms. What is important? Convection is important and it comes in denominator, reaction is less. So, D A is 
less okay higher the value of larger the value of dA okay it says that the reaction is more compared to convection right. So, Damkolon numbers I am not going to spend more time on this because we already discussed this or learned this in chemical engineering uh, chemical reaction engineering part 1 ok. And in the so, this is a this is a definition for D A for first order reaction ok. For second order or nth order reaction D A is nothing but or Damkolon number is nothing but k into C A 0 n minus 1 in L divided by u ok. So, this term has appeared here because that concentration will also come in picture right? and uh, that initial concentration or inlet concentration rather, but raised to n minus 1 n is the order. So, where are we? So, we have this equation sorry I <laughs> will get back to the main equation because that we should not forget. So, this is the main equation that I have got in that I have two dimensionless numbers Peclet number that characterizes the extent of back mixing or dispersion and Damkolar number that characterizes the importance of reaction ok as against convection. And for in order to solve this equation I need boundary conditions again two boundary conditions one divided by P e remember this close close vessel we have we have used this before right at lambda is equal to 0 that means inlet and at the outlet at the outlet we have d psi by d lambda is equal to 0 that is at lambda is equal to 1 outlet close close vessel right. So, these two boundary conditions I do not need a boundary condition or I do not need initial condition now ok. This is the equation because the steady state equation steady state equation two boundary conditions I solve this equation for psi that is dimensionless concentration of say A ok. What I get is this psi at why see psi is changing with respect to length, but where, where 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 at what position I do I want the value of psi? I want the value of psi at an exit exit because that is going to decide a conversion. Psi is a conversion concentration, right? So correspondingly, so best so if I know the concentration, I can calculate the conversion. Okay. Now this psi at the outlet that means at lambda is equal to one or z is equal to l. Okay. So psi at lambda equal to 1 is equal to after I solve this equation what I get of course, this is nothing but C A L that is outlet concentration divided by inlet concentration okay. and in terms of conversion it is going to be 1 minus x okay. and you get a very big expression analytical expression if I solve this equation. Okay. And I am just writing it, I am not spending time for this mathematical uh, derivation here. What is more important is I get a value of conversion based on what? There will be two numbers here, which are the two numbers? Peclet number and Damkolon number. Okay. So, this is nothing but look at this expression, there is no need to buy hard this expression, but then you should know that there is an equation like this possible. What are we doing? We are looking at a tubular reactor, non ideal reactor with axial mixing, right, with axial mixing, and this mixing is characterized by a number called Peclet number. This is a close close boundary condition. Sorry, it is a very big expression. Okay. So, what do you see here on the right hand side Peclet number what else you expect here Damkolar number there is no Damkolar, but something called Q why because it is quite complicated now this Q is nothing but a function of Damkolar number. Let me write it here 
yeah. So, where, where q is equal to root of 1 plus d a divided by p e into 4 sorry it should be 4 d a by p e right. So, I get expression for psi which is nothing but 1 minus x right. So, x is nothing but 1 minus psi ok. So, 1 minus this quantity will give me the conversion will give me the conversion. Shall I just write it again <laughs> yeah it's, it's, x is equal to 1 minus 4 q exponential p e by 2 divided by 1 plus q square exponential p e q by 2 minus 1 minus q square exponential minus p e q by 2. This is this is a conversion. So, so, now compare this with what you got in the case of in the case of tanks in series model. What was it? x is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus tau i k raised to n. So, this is dispersion model, this is tanks in series models. So, obviously, this is simpler <laughs> compared to this. But does not matter these days no like you have everything fed in computer. So, you can calculate a conversion is not an issue. What is more important how close are you to the reality ok and so in so look at the entire exercise what have we done so far or if I want to design a reactor how do I do it ok based on this one parameter model. So, let me write down in steps ok design of a non ideal reactor using one parameter model. What do I do first? Okay. I do tracer experiment in the lab, get C T sorry C T versus T curve. All right. Then determine E t. Third, determine variance sigma or sigma square and you know the definition of this. Shall I write it here? Okay. Right. Once you get sigma, determine if it is tanks in series n you know you know this is related to this ok or p e this is again related to this. Up to this point I am still looking at a flow pattern now using this parameters what I need to do is just get the conversion. Now, for first order reaction conversion x sorry first order reaction I have an analytical expression, but depending on the order I will have probably I will have to do it numerically especially in the case of uh, dispersion model ok. So, get conversion by solving reaction enabled balance reaction enabled balance ok for a real case. So, in this particular so for a first order of course, I will repeat 1 minus 1 by 1 plus tau i uh, k raise to n this is tanks in series model and x is equal to sorry I do not want to write it here is a big expression for a dispersion model. 
dispersion model. This will be function of P E and D A, right. So, this is the overall procedure, this is for a design. Now, sorry, I, I started, I said that this is a design problem and I have, I have written an algorithm to calculate a conversion. Okay. So, this is not really a design problem, see it is like you are given the length or the volume of the reactor and you are calculating the conversion, okay. but then it can be other way around. Somebody says I want 50 percent conversion, okay. design the reactor for me. So, what will I do? Okay. I will just do the entire exercise, assume some flow rate, calculate a conversion, if it is not matching play with the flow rate, okay. but I would do an entire exercise again. Okay. So, this becomes a trial and error, trial and error method okay. and it is it's a bit complicated, but there is no way out because the flow pattern or your flow rate that you are going to decide the residence time is likely to change your E curve also, it is likely to ch change your mixing also. So, every time whatever flow rate that you want to operate it at okay, is always better to do experiment and see whether you have the right kind of E curve or you have taken into consideration uh, the non-ideality and accordingly the value of P E and uh, P E or N. Okay. So, this procedure tells you for a given volume what is the conversion possible problem can be solved iteratively to get a particular conversion sorry to get volume for a desired conversion. Okay. So, this is how it works okay. because you want to incorporate the flow patterns right. If, if, if we had assumed the reactor to be ideal close to PFR or CSTR things would have been much easier like what we did before, okay. but now I want to take into consideration the flow patterns all right. And this is remember this is only for a reactor which is giving me a behavior close to a tubular reactor. Okay. If you have a very irregular geometry then this is not going to fit your P, P E or N values are not going to they are not enough one parameter models are not enough or they are not it is not adequate. Okay to rather express or characterize your flow pattern you have to go for multi parameter models we will see that later. Okay. So, this works for particular E curve always remember that I had told you in the beginning of this particular uh, first lecture of this chapter okay, that if you have very weird like E curve you do not think of using a one parameter model for it, it should look like CSTR then going from CSTR to PFR all right. right. So, let us solve one problem of course, I am not going to do numerical uh, calculations here, but again like whatever I have written words here let me uh, try and explain in more detail if one has to solve a problem. Okay. So, the first so who so what what is given to you? C T versus T. Okay. So, this is what you would expect okay, in a problem. The tracer concentration, the tracer concentration time and concentration, the unit can be grams per liter or moles per liter, here it can be seconds, minutes, whatever. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And here again you have some numbers, right. So, it at 0 time it will be 0, then probably 1, then 7, 20 and then it may come down again say 8, 3 what. So, this is the this is a typical behavior like this. Okay. So, this is given to you. What else do you need to design a reactor? The value of k at the rate constant and what order. So, that independently somebody would have determined it for you in a differential reactor or in laboratory um, and then uh, they would have estimated values of k uh, rate constant activation energy if it is uh, exothermic endothermic reaction and all, 
frequency factor and order. Okay. So, these are all parameters for the reaction kinetics. Fine. So, this is what is given to you and from this you need to determine the conversion okay, using different models. Now, the problem may be calculate conversion for a CSTR PFR one parameter models, it can be tank in series and can be dispersion. Okay. Now, just one question before we go ahead, see it is not that we have always solve equa equations whatever we know and get a values, but then if it is a first order reaction or if it is a positive order reaction, CSTR will give me one bound, conversion will be minimum or maximum conversion will be for CSTR positive order reaction conversion will be minimum. PFR will give me another bound conversion will be maximum and in between you have this mixing happening because of which conversion will be in between PFR and CSTR. Okay. Right? The tubular reactor. Okay. So, only thing is because of partial back mixing the conversion is going to get affected and since this is a positive order reaction. Okay, back mixing is not desired for the conversion higher like higher conversion will get affected adversely with back mixing right of course you need initial inlet concentration and all for all this exercise okay so how do i proceed i have t 1 2 3 4 and so on C T concentration measured concentration 1 0 1 7 20 and so on. I need to get E T I need to get E T how do I get E T? E T is equal to C T divided by integration 0 to infinity C T D T. Now, how do, so C T is known C T is known for a particular time I need to know this how much is the tracer that I have injected. So, the entire concentration I have a plot of C t versus time. Okay. If I want to get this value what do I do? I just take the area under the curve from 0 to infinity, infinity it may meet the x axis. So, I do not know do not need to go further. So, this area is nothing but this denominator. I am just explaining you the procedure. So, this gives me E t. So, I will have some values here. I am not going to write those values. I will have some values here. Right. So, I got E t. From E t, what do I find out? First thing is I need to get average residence time. I need to get average residence time. I want the value of tau. Remember, everywhere tau came in picture. Okay, so that tau is required. How do I get average residence time or mean residence time? Mean residence time is this. The expression for mean residence time tau T m is equal to zero to infinity T e t d t. Again tau is equal to T m is valid only for closed closed system. So, what I need here is from this plot I will calculate T into E t and I will have a value. So, T into E t I will have some values oh sorry it looks like 0. Okay. So, let me write, write cross I am just simply multiplying these two numbers T T E t d t. I am explaining the only the procedure huh, because doing calculations in the lecture will be a bit difficult. Okay. So, T E T and then from this once I know T E T I can plot see I can plot T E T versus T. So, whatever plot I get okay, I get an area under the curve. I do not know the nature of this, it can be anything. All, all I need to do is get area under the curve and that is nothing but tau. Okay. 
So, in this step I have determined the value of tau that is mean residence time ok mean residence time. So, this is a this particular row would give me the T T uh, by multiplying these two and then area under the curve when I plot this against this that is time this against this ok and I get uh, mean residence time. What do I need next? Then what I do is I take T square now you know why I am doing this instead of t I have t square why will I need t square because I need to calculate variance and you know the expression for variance. What is the expression for variance? The expression is this sigma square is equal to 0 to infinity t minus tau e t d t. If I expand this it is t square e t d t minus 2 tau sorry t e t d t plus tau square 0 infinity e t d t. You know what this is, this is nothing but 1. So, this becomes tau square and what is this? This is tau. So, this becomes minus 2 tau square plus tau square that means it is minus tau square. So, these two terms I know what I need is only this right. So, this is to be found out by plotting t square e t d t sorry t square e t versus time and whatever plot I am going to see uh, sorry I do not know the nature of this. I take the area under the curve and this is nothing but this term ok. This term minus tau square this is nothing but tau square minus tau square. So, this term this area minus tau square is nothing but the variance. So, I, did, I, I get a variance I hope it is clear. So, I have these values I, I plot these values against these values this versus time get get a curve and area under the curve will give me this particular term this term minus this all is tau square I have already determined tau that is mean residence time in my earlier exercise right here tau ok. So, from that I get sigma square that is variance why I want variance because variance tells me the extent of distribution or dispersion ok right. So, from variance I calculate get P e or n from sigma square ok. This is required sorry these two are required because I want to get conversion from this. So, th from this there are expressions for conversion and you know the expression. So, here it is nothing but 1 minus 1 by 1 plus tau i k raised to n for first order reaction and similarly you have a big expression here. You will get these two values. Now, you may ask me these values will be different or they are same. See if they should be quite close to each other ok. These two values if your exercise is correct these two values should be very close to each other alright. So, you may get say I, I may so I will just write a value say CSTR you may get a conversion 0 0.5 PFR you may get a conversion 0 0.7 for a first order reaction or positive order reaction and it is quite possible that for a tank in series model you get 0 0.63 and dispersion ok. For a dispersion model you may get something close to say 0 0.61 or 62 ok. So, they are quite close to each other just to give an idea and they these two are going to be in between these two positive order reaction effect of mixing on the reaction conversion ok. 
So, this is how it going to be okay, as far as effect of mixing on reactor is concerned oh sorry on uh, conversion is concerned when you have a tubular reactor okay, and uh, we are talking about uh, uh, first order reaction. Of course, it can be any other reaction, but the, the algorithm or the procedure will be quite similar be quite similar. So, there are many examples in assignments, there are many examples in uh, textbooks like Levenspiel, Fogler and all like and uh, you can solve these examples. Okay. And uh, if you are clear about the overall procedure, then there should not be much of a problem. Okay. Fine. Now, there is some correlation between this n and uh, Peclet number. So, approximately this n is nothing but Peclet number by 2 plus 1. Okay, approximately. This is approximate relationship. So they are related. So if you if you want to compare these two approaches, where so the question is like whether I should go for dispersion model or tanks in series model. So that will depend on your choice whether you like differential equation or you like algebraic equation. Because in the case of um, tanks in series model, you need to solve algebraic equation. In case of uh, dispersion model you need to deal with differential equations. Okay. Typically, the calculation wise or uh, if you want to remember formulae and all that probably tank in series model is relatively easy compared to dispersion model. Fine. Now, uh, let us go ahead. Uh, so, what we have seen here is that we can use one parameter model if you have a typical E curve. So, it is always it is very important no? like once you do experiment tracer experiment you get an E curve you should know whether you should apply E one parameter model or uh, some other model okay? because sometimes one parameter model may not fit. I have been repeating this again and again because it is very important. right? It's, so, sometimes students are in impression that one parameter model can be used for any reactor. Okay? So, uh, after you do an entire exercise you will realize that you have got a value which is or you, or you come up with a result which uh, are of no use okay because the e curve doesn't represent a tubular reactor or uh, which can fit in either dispersion model or tanks in series model fine now uh, we are going to go one step ahead and look at two parameter model Now, why would why do we need extra parameter? Because one parameter is not able to explain the flow behavior properly, as simple as that. As I said, like if I go on changing the value of Peclet number or n, I, I, I get a typical behavior like this, right. Of course, this peak is going to go increase. But it is not necessary that E curve falls in these categories only or you will have E curve of this nature only. As I said before, I may have E curve like this, I may have E curve like this, right. It all depends on the geometry that you have, it all depends on what is happening inside. Okay. So, in that case, you should be quick enough to know that my one parameter model is not going to help. Okay, I have to go for a two parameter model or a multi parameter model. So, here we need to know what happens inside reactor you have you should have some information about what is happening inside a reactor. So, that I have a proper guess as to, to how to go ahead. Okay. Now, I will give you an example here. Okay. So, you have you have a normal C CSTR like look reactor or I, I would not call it a CSTR, it is a mixing tank or mixer or reactor. Okay. Now, I, this is the this is the way I represent CSTR, okay. but in reality I will have a vessel, I will have a vessel in that I may have a reactor or oh sorry <laughs> agitator, okay. I will have an agitator. Now, I am looking at uh, the geometry also, huh? so it is not a schematic, but it is somewhat real picture. Okay. I will have a nozzle here, I will have a nozzle here okay. and I have feed coming in and the product stream going out from here. Right. Look at this nozzle is now close to inlet. 
ok. Now, this is the way, so it may be a overflow ok. So, the ex, whatever extra comes in goes out from here and there is intense agitation inside. So, you have a nice mixing happening ok, so called nice because most of the times like uh, you do not have proper mixing in, in each and every corner of the CSTR or in any mixing tank for uh, for that matter ok. There are always some pockets in the reactor which do not see the kind of turbulence intensity which is there near the impeller. You can very well appreciate this fact ok. See if you want exactly same amount of turbulence intensity or mixing level everywhere in the tank, then you need to put agitators as many agitators as possible at every position in the reactor, is not it? That should be the case, but that is not practical. So, normally you have only one agitator or for some time you may have one shaft on which you have multiple agitators or impellers mounted, right. So, it is quite possible that if you are away from the pro impeller, especially in the corners, then there are stagnant pockets. Right. So, what is likely to happen in this particular case? See, the feed is coming in, right, and you have certain dead zones possible. Okay. So, at this point is away from agitator, this point is away from agitator. So, somewhere in this part, you will have sorry, I will use another pane you will have dead zones, right. This is not the only effect. Another effect can be that some of the streams, see there is a stream, like you can imagine now, this stream gets divided in several sub streams, ok. So, it is quite likely that some part of the inlet stream will directly go here and will not see the agitator at all. What is this? This is bypassing. These are dead zones, and in between you have perfect back mixing. Or in between or rather, in this particular region, sorry, right? So now I have three things happening: bypass, dead zones, and mixed zone. I know how to model this, this is like a normal CSTR. How do I incorporate this? How do I incorporate this in my model? So, I need to have a combined effect of all this happening here. Okay. So, what I am going to see at the exit is the effect of what happens here, what happens here and what happens here. So, all these three effects are going to tell me the conversion or going to decide a conversion. So, if I just assume a normal CSTR, a mixed zone I may go wrong. I need to consider these two effects also which are probably not desired, but definitely I have to consider them to design the reactor ok bypass and dead zones. And there is no provision to consider these effects in my one parameter model that is tanks in series or dispersion model ok. There is no provision for these. So, I need to have additional parameters, I need to complicate my model further, so that I get these effects incorporated in the, my model and my predictable conversion will be more or it will be closer to the reality. Thank you, we will discuss this further okay, in the next lecture.